Welcome back to this tutorial. We can start learning some important topics of database here. And we can start with a topic case in database. Okay. So, key has important role in relational database. Actually, this keys are used for identifying unique rows from a table. Each and every rows of a table indicates different records of different entities. These keys are actually used for identifying each and every rows uniquely. And also, it establishes relationship among tables. Certain keys are used for implementing relationship among tables. That means we can implement cross reference among tables with the help of certain keys. Okay, now consider various types of keys in database. Okay, these are the uh, keys available composite keys, super keys, candidate keys, primary key, and secondary keys. So now we can start with this composite keys. A key that consists of more than one attribute to uniquely identify rows in a table is called composite key. Key consists of more than one attribute. And this attribute collection used for identifying each and every rows uniquely in a table. This rows of a table actually indicates record of different entity. Each and every rows indicate records of different entities. These rows are also called as tuples. Okay. So, composite key, mean, key means collection of attributes used for identifying rows of a table uniquely. Okay. Next is about the super key. A super key is a set of one or more attributes. That means super key may be a single attribute or a composite attribute right super key is a set of one or more attributes used for uniquely identifying rows in a table each and every row of a table indicate records of a particular entity right these rows are also called tuples the super key is a single attribute or a collection of attributes that means it's a single attribute or a composite attribute it can be used for identifying rows in a table uniquely. Consider one example. So, this is an employee table with three columns. And each column is represented by certain attributes like social security number of the employee, then employee number, employee name. These are different values. Each row re represents Record of a particular entity. That record contains the social security number, employee number and employee name of a particular employee. So, each and every row form the record of a particular entity. Right. So, from this we can identify the super keys possible in this employee table. What are they? So, these are the different super keys possible for this particular employee table. What are the first one is single SSN. That means this SSN key is used for uniquely or we can use this SSN key as, uh, as a super key for uniquely identifying each of these rows present in this employee table. Is it possible? Check. That means this SSN number for different employees are different here. So, using this SSN value uniquely, we can identify each of these row uniquely. Okay. So, SSN is a super key. Similarly, consider this E number, employee number. Consider this employee numbers are different for different employees. That means in different rows, the employee number field contains different value or unique value. So, this employee number alone can be used as a super key for identifying each of these rows. Right? Then consider this composite key. Here, this particular super key contains two attributes. 
so this is a composite key contain two attributes like ssn and e number using this combination here we can identify each of these rows uniquely is it possible check now this ssn and e number combination present in different rows are unique so this combination also used for identifying each of these rows uniquely okay so this one is also an example for super key of this given employee table consider another super key this is again a composite key because here it contains more than one attribute ssn and e name right this combination is also a super key of this employee table because using this ssn and e name field value these are unique for different rows this combination ssn and e name values of different rows are different right so this one is also a super key here and again here we have a composite key with three different attributes ssn e number and e name that means the three attributes together this one is also a super key because using this attribute values we can identify each of these rows uniquely okay again this e number and e name combination this is again a composite attribute card because it contains two attribute okay these two are not composite attribute because here it contain a single attribute and all others are example for composite attribute because this super key combination contain more than one attribute for uniquely identifying each of this rows right this combination also example for super key because using this e number and e name combination all these rows are unique here so these are the various possibilities of super key for this given employee table okay now we can consider the next type of key that is about this candidate key candidate key is a subset of super key right this super, uh, candidate key the definition is a minimal super key with no redundant attribute minimal super key with no redundant attributes this uh, definition become clear with uh, with the example given so consider the same employee table again right and all these are the possible super keys and candidate key means the minimal super key with no redundant attributes so from this set of super keys now we need to extract the candidate keys what are they so for that we need to uh, identify or extract the minimal super key minimal super key with uh, super key with no redundant attribute so consider this particular uh, super key first e number e name combination right using this particular super key we can uh, uniquely identify each of this rows in this employee table because these two field values are unique for different rows of this employee table right so this is a super key right now we can avoid this e name field from here that means without this e name using this e number alone we can uh, identify each of these rows uniquely is it possible we can just remove or neglect about this e name attribute the remaining is e number right so now check is it possible to identify using this remaining e number part is it possible to identify each of these rows uniquely exactly it is possible here using this e number part we can identify each of these rows uniquely so this e name here is a redundant attribute this is not a necessary term here in the super key because using this e number part alone we can identify each of these rows uniquely right so this e number part is unnecessary so this form 
the redundant attribute in this particular super key okay so this is not a candidate key because here it present a redundant attribute so it is not a minimal key right next consider this particular combination ssn e number and e name while removing this e name we can identify each of these rows uniquely. Is it possible? Right, it is possible using this SSN and E number combination. The values of these two fields are different for different rows present here. So we can uniquely identify each of these rows using these two field values. So again, this E name become redundant here. And once more, now remove this E number part also. We can neglect E number and E name now. And the remaining part is SSN. Is, this uh, is it possible to identify each of these rows uniquely using this SSN alone? Exactly, it is possible here. That means these two values become redundant here. Okay, this SSN is only necessary for identifying each of these rows uniquely. So these two attributes here become redundant attributes right so this is not a candidate key right now consider the case of this single attribute ssn now check using this particular key is it possible to because it is uh, is it possible to identify each of these rows uniquely exactly because this is a super key and while removing this ssn here we uh, have left with no other attribute this uh, key become empty so this one is necessary here in this particular super key this particular ssn is necessary after removing this we can't identify all these rows uniquely right so this ssn alone is a minimal super key used for identifying each of these rows uniquely right so this SSN is an example of candidate key here. And similarly, consider this one also. E number part. Okay. In this particular super key, here we have this single attribute E number here. Using this E number, is it possible to identify each of these rows uniquely? Exactly right. It is possible to identify each of these rows uniquely using this E number alone. Right. So, removing this E number from this list, uh, this list become empty. That means this super key become empty. Then we can't identify this rows uniquely with the help of the remaining attribute. Because while removing this E number, the list become empty. Right. So, this E number alone is also a minimal super key with no redundant attribute. And this one is also a minimal super key with no redundant attribute. So these two form the candidate keys of this particular given employee table. All others are not minimal super key. In this set, uh, these are super keys, right? These are super keys. Using this, we can identify each of these rows uniquely. But here present certain redundant attribute also, right? Due to this redundant attribute, this become non-minimal super keys. Okay, so consider the definition again. Candidate key means minimal super key. Minimal super key means a super key with no redundant attribute. So these two here form the candidate key because these two are minimal super key. Minimal super key means super key with no redundant attribute. Okay, so these two form the candidate keys here. Okay, so next is about the primary key. A primary key is selected from a set of candidate keys. Okay, this is done by a database admin or a database designer. A database admin or a database designer can choose one among, a, a one among from a candidate key as a primary key. That depends on the database designer or admin. Okay, based on that convenience, they can use any one of the candidate keys as primary key. Okay, 
So in the previous example, this SSN and E number are identified as the candidate keys of our given employee table. From this, based on the uh, requirement, this admin or the designer can select either this SSN as the primary key or the E number as the primary key. Okay, inside the table representation, the selected primary keys are al always represented with an underline. Okay, so inside the table column header, we can identify a primary key because the primary keys are always uh, marked with an underline. Okay, so next is about the secondary keys. Out of all candidate keys, only one gets selected as a primary key, right? The remaining keys are known as alternate or secondary keys. So in this example, these two from the candidate keys and the database admin or the designer can choose one among them as a primary key as the convenience. And the next one for the secondary key or the alternate key, alternate key or secondary key, both are the same, right? The one is selected as primary key and the remaining candidate keys are called as secondary keys. Okay. Foreign keys are the special keys used for defining cross reference between tables or used for defining relationship between different tables in a database. Consider example this employee table and department table, employee table with SSN, E number, E name and D number. Okay, this D number actually indicate the department in which the number of the department in which this particular employee working. Okay, and inside the department table, we have the attribute D name, D number and department manager social security number. Now, we are going to make this D number as the foreign key of this employee table in order to make a relationship between this employee table with the department table. Okay. For making this D number uh, attribute as the foreign key between these two tables, it must match with the primary key field of our department table. That means these values, various values comes inside this D number field must match with the primary key attributes of our department table. From this representation, it is clear that this D number field is the primary key of our department and this D, uh, this E number field is the primary key of our employee table. Okay, so now using this D number, uh, consider this, this must be matched with the primary key of our department, D number field of our department table. Okay. This is the this is one important property of a foreign key. The foreign key field of one table must match with the primary key field of the second table. This D number is the foreign key and this uh, D number is the primary key of our second table department. So this value of D number comes here must match with the D number field values here. Right? The values possible here are 1, 2, 3. These are the values available for this D number field of our department. The primary field of our department. So this is a valid foreign key. Okay. Now we can uh, using this particular foreign key. Now we can understand more information like we can identify the department name of each of these employee. Okay. So the question is, we need to identify the department name of a particular employee with uh, employee number 226. Okay, we need to identify the name of the department of an employee with employee number 226. How to identify? So this is the employee with employee number 226. So move to uh, the foreign key field value here. Here it is 1. So, 
this using this foreign key value we can identify or match with one of the rows of our department here it here in this particular row there exist match with this d number and d number okay so connect this particular d number with this particular row with d number value equal to 1 then move to the d name field research from this it is clear that the employee with employee number 226 comes in a department with department name research okay so the next question is we need to identify the manager of a department of an employee with social security number is this 58756423 okay we need to identify the manager of the department in which this particular employee is working the employee with social security number is this okay so in order to identify the name of the manager or in order to identify social security number of our department manager first move to this foreign key field value here it is the value 2 we need to uh, identify a match with any one of the rows of our department table how to identify the match this value this foreign key field value must be comes in match with any one of the rows of this primary key field of our department so this value comes in match with this particular d number value so fix this particular row okay now check the d number social security number this one okay from this it is clear that the employee with this particular social security number itself as the department manager right so next question is identify the name of the department of a particular employee with social security number 211 so we need to go to the foreign key field value here it is 3 okay so using this foreign key field value we need to identify a match in the department table so here exists the match these two field value comes in match okay so fix this particular row then go to the d name field from this it is clear that the employee with e number 211 works in headquarters okay so this is the usage of foreign keys foreign keys are used for generating relationship between different tables also we can say it as the uh, key foreign key as a key used for defining cross reference between tables okay because of this cross reference we can collect more information about a particular entity okay so all these are the various keys present in our database system okay so using this information we can uh, learn about the normalization and detail in our coming videos okay thank you